Hi there, my name is David Spreadborough and I'm the international trainer here at AMP Software. In this screencast I'm going to be looking at the user interface of AMP 5. It's designed to be very flexible so you can work with the software in any way that you feel comfortable with. Let's dive straight in and you'll see what I mean. The main window in the centre here is the viewer and this is where any images or video that you work on will appear. When viewing a number of items these are then managed by tabs. If I drag in a couple of video clips, you'll see what I mean. I can now move between my clips by selecting the tabs at the top. You'll notice that they're named Chain 1 and Chain 2, and that matches my history, my history window at the bottom. The history window not only gives you a visual reference of the filters that you've applied, but it's also a method of moving to a specific filter in a specific chain. The viewer window will then change accordingly. I can turn windows off by using the close icon in the corner. And if I go to view, and then history, I can view it again. I could even move the window Before I move on, it's worthwhile renaming the chains to something more relevant, and this is really handy when working on many open chains. And you'll see that my names now match what I've just entered in my tabs. When I dragged my video files into the interface, it detected them immediately as videos. As such, the video loader filter was automatically used. I could have used the quick icon at the top to load a video or image. Or I could have manually entered a load filter. Each filter that is used has specific settings. Some filters have a single tab, but some have many depending on the filter's technicality. If the filter requires a specific tool, such as selecting an area or points in an image, the appropriate tool will be selected automatically from the Tools window. Under Tools, we have the Inspector, where I can see some basic information along with the location of my mouse on the image and the values of the pixel at that location. If I just move back to my Suspect chain, move my mouse, you'll see the inspector values change wherever my mouse is. The next is the zoom. I can use this tool for manual control or I can use my mouse and scroll wheel while on the image itself. I'll use my mouse and scroll wheel now. Or I can go to my tools zoom. Back to 100%. zoom in, or I can move around in the small graphic. Then we have the output histogram, and this will change automatically if I'm applying adjustment filters such as exposure or levels. Moving along, we have the basic file info that presents a summary of information obtained from the file. The last four, the selection, the ruler, the quadrilateral, and the point, are the tools more commonly used in conjunction with a filter's settings. So if I needed to draw a selection, perhaps for a crop, the selector tool would automatically be utilized. The filters window is split into two. The filter categories are down the left side and the filters inside that category are down the right. As my footage is interlaced, I need to go to the interlaced category 
and then select Deinterlace. You will now see that this filter is in my filter chain. Let's add in a few more filters. I'm now correcting the lens distortion by using the straight lines that I can see on the image and then I'm going to apply aspect ratio correction. Lastly, I want to just select the region of the video that I require. My filter chain now consists of my video loader, deinterlace, undistort, aspect ratio, and then my range. Before we move on, let's open our bookmarks window. We can add bookmarks by selecting the bookmark flag in the player window. There are many keyboard shortcuts, so it's easier and quicker to simply use the M key to add a bookmark. There are lots of playback controls within the player window and I could enter a frame number and jump directly to that frame. I could loop my video. I could also skip through the video using a specific special frame. So I can go forward by frames, by iframe, seconds, minutes, hours, or even days. Let's go through by seconds. I've added all my bookmarks now, and these are really handy to not only highlight specific points in a video, but also to document a specific point in a filter chain. Before I finish off, let me just point out some other items within the application. Down in the player window, we have a little snapshot button. This hides a lot of power behind the right click button, and you can choose how the button works. You can select what to save and how to save it. Perhaps you wanted to take an image of the entire desktop, as it includes a proprietary player window, along with the 5 interface. And then, rather than saving the image, you wanted it to be placed immediately into a Word document. The main file info tool is found at the top under the disk icon. This brings up the file info dialog box, where you get a summary, the media info report, the FF probe report, and the details from the EXIF tool. Under the file menu, you'll find the usual items for loading and saving your project, but it also gives you access to other items such as the video screen capture. Under the project menu, I can enter the details for my project. The view menu not only gives you the ability to choose which windows are open, but it gives you a quick method to hide various windows, perhaps for when using the software to present video in court. Lastly, the help. Well, that's there to help you, with access to all the guides and the reference documents included with the software. It's time to finish, but before I do, let's complete this little project by compiling our report. 
project, generate report. For this example, I'm just going to use PDF. All of my details, every parameter that I've selected and all of my bookmarks are automatically entered into this document. Well, thanks for watching this short introduction to the AMP5 interface. I hope you found it informative. Please remember to subscribe to our channel so you're informed when I post the next screencast. Bye for now.